Hey guys, so we are back at the Beehives and it's another scorching day here. It's beautiful here in LA uh, today. It has been for the past few days and uh, mind blown yet again. Uh, learned something completely new and uh, it's called bee drift. Uh, so no, our bees aren't running around in cars screeching around the streets of Hollywood. Um, they are actually a little bit confused about which hive is theirs. So we noticed that one of the hives was doing particularly uh, weakly, I guess, um, just not very many bees in it at all. And the other hive at the far end is just crazy full of bees and they're drawing out comb and um, really filling out the boxes very, very quickly. So it seems that bees actually can get a little bit confused about which box is theirs. Um, and you can actually have as much as 60% of your of your colony move from one hive to another, which is a crazy, crazy kind of percentage. Uh, so it turns out bees actually really like to have um, entrances to their hives marked individually so they can kind of uh, figure out which one is theirs. And so what we've done just kind of in the interim is put some black tape on the front of the boxes. Um, each hive has like different kind of markings so the bees can actually figure out which hive is theirs. And then what we're also going to do is take a frame of brood and nurse bees uh, from the very strong hive and actually place it into the weakest one and hopefully that'll actually kind of uh, push that one along. So um, I'll show you the process of doing that and um, hopefully yeah you'll be uh, a little bit more informed about bee drift. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Okay bye. Hey guys, so what we're going to do right now is take a frame of capped brood and move it from the very strong hive to the weak hive here. And the reason being is because we think there's been some bee drift going on, uh, which is essentially where the bees really kind of have trouble figuring out which hive to go into, which is why we've put the black tape on the front of the hives at the moment, just so they kind of have something to distinguish. But we also need to help this hive out because they really have been really slow in drawing out the comb. Um, so we'll show you the process and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll learn something. Cool. <coughs> so all three of these hives were started at the same time from packages of bees. Uh, and a package of bees is uh, a number of bees which have a queen but they haven't started putting kind of uh, comb onto frames or anything like that. So as you can see this one actually is almost full all the way to the top and with this one we still have quite a number of uh, frames that are empty on the sides of the, of the hive. Um, and as you can see almost nothing on there whatsoever. And I'm also going to be having a quick look for hive beetles because the other two hives did have a number of hive beetles as well. Uh, and then we also want to kind of check for brood to see if the queen is still laying also. So this is a frame of honey. So it tends to be that you find the brood in the middle of the box and then the honey to the outside on the outside frames and they've actually they've filled it out a little bit more than they had last week we've had the the, uh, the tape on there for about for about five or six days and it actually seems to have made a little bit of an improvement but we still kind of want to help them along a little bit so here we have cat brood and then the lighter cat on the outside is the honey and bees will actually take that and use that to feed the brood. I'm having a quick look for the queen as well. And again, you know, this should be at this stage a little bit further along than what it is. So the central ones are, are doing nicely, but compared to the other two hives, I mean, 
you know, it's almost like they're a month, a month behind compared to the other two hives. And the nice thing is we're actually not seeing any hive beetles. It's strange. It seems like the hive beetles actually went for the stronger hives. Um, like this weaker hive has had no hive beetles in it whatsoever, which is kind of strange. You'd think that it would actually be the opposite way around. Again, a nice, a nice frame of cat. I think the queen will probably be on one of the next two frames. She's fairly easy to spot because she has a green, a green dot on her. So we are going to open up this much stronger hive, and I'll show you the difference um, between the two hives. So we've already put a second box on top and you will see that there's a noticeable difference between, between the two hives even though they were started at the same time. So this second box just put on not not too long ago and you already see from the central frames which I'll show you in a second they've really been, been very busy and there, there are so many more bees in this in this uh, in this hive than the other one and again you know we think it's down to drift <laughs> you know but this frame is a completely beautiful frame that they're filling out and it's really heavy it's actually it's really surprising how heavy these frames get when they start really kind of filling it out and you know it's not even completely full yet and it's you know it's already got a really good weight to it and I can show you the next frame you know same same with this frame filling out with with brood really kind of like nice pattern exactly how you'd expect it to be smaller kind of uh, drone cells at the bottom and then honey to the sides and brood in the middle it's great it looks really great so we're actually gonna take this box off I just wanted to show you the difference between between the two the two hives. You know, this other hive really should have at least a second a second on top right now, uh, which is why we're going to give it a bit of a bit of a hand. So we're going to do two things, we're going to take a frame of brew and we're also going to have a quick look at the beetle trap and see if that needs filling. So these were really effective. Oh wow, and they continue to be. So we have a whole ton of small hive beetles in there, which is great. Uh, that's really encouraging. So that's actually going to make life a lot, a lot easier because we're not going to have to worry so much about those. <coughs> so we know the queen is definitely laying in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a frame of brood, but we also need to make sure the queen isn't on the frame as well because obviously we don't want to you know don't want to introduce the queen into the other the other hive so this is a great frame it's got tons of really really nice caps brood and honey you can actually see the honey dripping 
And what we're going to do is we're going to pull the other frames just to identify where the other queen is and make sure that she doesn't go in. So we're going to put this back in, but I think that's the frame that we want to, we want to transfer. So we've found the queen, because uh, the last thing we want to do is pull a frame of brood with a queen on it and put it into the other into the other hive. That would be an absolute disaster and probably ruin both hives. Um, so we know the queen was on this frame and this is a great frame of brood. Um, really well filled out with honey on it as well. Um, plenty of bees. So I'm going to pull this one and actually put it into this weaker hive right here. Um, and also what you want to do is you want to make sure that you put the brood next to brood and not on the outer frames. So you want to make sure that it's it's on the inner frames as well. So they just think it's, you know, another another frame of brood which they can tend to. Um, some people say that you should really kind of shake off the bees and the nurse bees as well. Uh, and then other beekeepers say, no, you should keep them on because if you have a weak hive and introduce another frame of brood it's just going to stress that hive out even more because they'll you know they won't have enough nurse bees to actually help this brood so we're just going to put everything in at once and tuck it up and hopefully this should really kind of give this this hive a bit of a, a bit of a boost and a jump to kind of get it to where it should be compared to the other hives um, the other great thing, actually, you've seen no no hive beetles whatsoever, uh, and those those uh, beetle blaster traps are just working like a dream. So, really, really happy about that. Um, so now I'm just going to move these frames back over. And put the empty frames in. And it really, really shouldn't affect this hive too much because it's, you know, it's a really strong hive and it's doing very, very well. Um, so I'm, I'm quite confident that this is this is the right thing to do with, with this as we have it right now. Um, and then actually, before I box this up, I'm actually going to put the beetle blaster back in, but I kind of want to clean it up a little bit. So we'll cut and then we'll come back. Okay, taking the strong frame of brood and we put it into the weak hive and we're going to come back in a week's time and see if it's made any difference so uh, check back in and subscribe uh, next week we'll be opening up again and uh, hopefully we'll see an, uh, you know a nicer stronger hive okay thanks